Hey guys, OJ Albani here, bringing you guys uh, a pretty cool video here today. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen me kind of experiment with short on content, whether it be uploading as a full movie like I did in like Trick House, Royal D, a um, bunch of other leaks, or whether I do um, weekly uploads like SBT uh, recently, or what I'm planning on doing today is kind of doing like a two part mini movie, um, like kind of uh, not trilogy, maybe two of them. I don't know. We'll see how it ends up going. Um, but I want to do my most recent APA class run. It's actually currently ongoing right now uh, because we're doing Gen 7. Awesome. It's a fun friends league. I really love my team and I thought it could make for interesting content and it could be cool to kind of, you know, see whether you guys prefer it weekly one big movie or a bunch of little mini movies kind of scattered throughout the season so let me know what you guys think of this format down in the comments below um let me go with bleh, let me know what you guys think of the team the games all that good stuff um favorite member on the team favorite game all that good stuff i'd really appreciate the love and support down at the bottom as well as dropping a like on the video and subscribing if you haven't done so already it's really easy completely free it takes like two seconds um i would really appreciate it i would love to get to a thousand uh, and I feel like we're, you know, picking up a little bit of traction. I'd really appreciate it if you helped us out along that way. But that being said, I think that's all of like the formalities out of the way. Um, like I said, this is a Gen 7 Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon League. We're playing at level 50 because some people want to play their games on Wi Fi and some people don't. So just keep consistent with playing all at level 50. Um, doesn't really matter. I think I played my first week at level 100 on accident, but other than that, it should be at level 50. And um, yeah, that being said, we'll go over our team really quick. It's not going to be super formal graphics or anything like that. I haven't pulled up in a team builder on Showdown, and uh, beyond that, we're gonna just jump into some game. Alrighty, so first pick of the draft, um, I actually ended up having third pick, which was really, really cool. Now, I really wanted to use Gen 7 Coco, but unfortunately, that ended up going second. I think the only reason that it didn't go first was because Kurt didn't want to try it. He wanted to try Mega Zam, which is completely fair. Mega Zam's awesome in Gen 7. If you guys ever saw our PMU run that we uploaded on the channel about a year, year and a half ago at this point, which is a Gen 7 uh, Wi Fi League, we had Mega Zam, we made it to finals. Really, really fun team. Um, really actually enjoyed uh, using Megazam a lot, so I definitely understand that. Um, then Coco went and wanted to try a really fun mod that I don't get to draft very often because it's kind of broken in Gen 8, but in Gen 7 it's just really good. And Kyurem Black. Now we don't have Freeze Drive, we don't have Boots, we don't have uh, Dragon Dance, we don't have all of those crazy things that makes uh, Icicle Spear, we don't have all those things that makes Gen 7, Gen 8 Kyurem Black super broken. But we still have a phenomenal Pokemon um, with an insane stats where it base 170 attack. Look at this thing with an Adamant nature. And I will run Adamant. You can't stop me. Um, at level 50, it hits 244, which is nuts. Let's look at the level 100 just because I'm curious. It's 482 attack, which is nuts. Insane bulk across the board. Uh, bulky Kerm is definitely great. I love me some sub toxic Kerm. I think it's actually a phenomenal set um, or just toxic in general. Um, it still has very strong special attack stat. So despite us not having great physical ice stab this gen, we can still throw out very powerful ice beams and earth powers and focus blast and dracos and things like that, which is great. We get fusion bolt for great coverage um, to hit uh, bulky water since we can't freeze dry them this gen, which is awesome. We get roost for recovery. Um, we can home claws to set up, which is definitely cool. Um, definitely some nice, you know, moves as well. We can have shadow balls for like, and shadow ball and shadow claw for like bronzongs and metagross that might want to try and check us and things like that. So um, there's definitely some cool, cool options here on Kyurem. Uh, base 95 speed is definitely really, really solid as well. And again, very, very bulky. But this is also going to be one of our Z captains. We're playing Usum. We get to use Z moves. We get two Z captains. I believe it was up to 30 points. Um, so we got this one and then I believe a 12 pointer, uh, which we'll kind of reveal a little bit later on. We end up drafting for Z moves. Uh, but this Pokemon is really, really solid with the Z. Obviously, Ice Z just kind of gives this thing plus Free Shock, which is a physical ice move. An absolute nuke. Now, typically, you don't see Free Shock on Kyurem other than you know, on Z sets, obviously, because it is a two turn move isn't a great you know side effect or a great uh, downside to it so we want to definitely make sure um that we're using this with a z but i've definitely seen it just rock like before because the is a great natural book so I'm, I'm rambling a little bit here on Kyurem, but i really am super excited to use this pokemon this season because uh i think it's absolutely phenomenal it fits my play style very well and i think it can be very versatile and uh, i can kind of bring out its strengths now round two comes along and i didn't really know what i wanted to get i'm not gonna pretend like you know i had uh, a crazy game plan. I was like, I want this, 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 and this. My next uh, round two pick was just, I'll take the best thing on the board that kind of pairs with Kieran best, and we'll go from there. Um, and for some reason, not tell you why, in a Generation 7 uh, league, that Mega Mawile ended up falling to me. Um, this offensive core is really, really insane. The only thing that they both don't appreciate is Steel Dice, but even then, Mega Mawile doesn't have defensive counterplay whatsoever. It bullies fat annoying fairies that might want to try and check Kyurem, 
um, which is also really, really nice. And this thing's just absolutely phenomenal. The fact that I got another debatably top 10 mod in the format in Gen 7, um, is, is pretty nuts. I mean, consider the fact that I had to go all the way down to 16 and then back up to me at three on that round two. Uh, absolutely excited. Now it does get rocks. Not gonna be hopefully using it as a rocker if I draft well with the rest of the team. But obviously with that huge power, that base 105 attack stat and that great, great defensive typing, this Pokemon is very, very difficult to deal with. I'm a firm believer that Mega Mawa doesn't have defensive counterplay. Um, you kind of have to beat it offensively and take care of its, uh, take advantage of its mediocre bulk with that base 50 HP stat and that terrible speed stat. But um, even then, this thing's phenomenal. On top of its stabs and player off and iron head, we have like brick break and focus punch, fire fang, ice punch, um, thunder punch. We get sucker punch for priority. We can knock off things. We can rock slide and do random fire types that might want to switch in on us or stone edge, uh, which is another option. We can SD and sweep. Um, we can even taunt, which is pretty funny. Uh, toxic, probably not, but again, absolutely phenomenal Pokemon, um, and impossible to switch into, especially when you take into account we got these two together. Um, I think it's gonna be great, especially when round three comes along. I only have to wait, like, you know, a few picks in between these picks, um, but this one really, really blew my mind that I am getting this, and I am kind of taking a chunk off my points here. Um, but I really do feel like it's actually worth it in we got Victini round three, which I'm very very excited for uh, Kieran Black Mega Mawile Victini is pretty pretty nuts now Victini and Kieran kind of do clump together speed tier wise a little bit But it's really not that big of a deal round three. Um, I don't care too much Victini bullies those fat steals that uh, Maw and Kieran might not appreciate really um, Incredibly versatile now. We can't run boots this gen, but we can still V create things We can still U turn around we can blue flare we can be flame charge weakness policy we can be even annoying defensive Victini sets, um, which are, you know, definitely slept on. We can trick things. We can even set up Trick Room for our Mawile and kind of get that slow U-turn out into it to, you know, kind of click a big old button. We can Wisp. Um, this thing's coverage is insane. Victory Star is great. Base 100 stats all across the board means it really can function in a ton of different ways. I love Victini. A lot of people love Victini, and rightfully so. This Pokemon's absolutely amazing. I'm, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to using it with these top three. Round three, uh, round four comes along. I want to roll compress a little bit. Like I said, I've used a lot of points. Um, kind of want to hit a bunch of different, uh, you know, box. I almost said check box. Would that be what you say? Hit a bunch of little check marks. I don't know. Regardless, um, with our next pick, I want to grab rocks. I need a bulky water. I need a bulky ground. So we grab Swampert. Just kidding, Seismitoad. Um, still very, very good this gen. I actually think Seismitoad is a little bit better in Gen 7 because. Hurt doesn't have flip turn, um, and like it doesn't gen eight, which I think is you know a really really big addition to having uh you know addition to Swampert's move set personally, um, and it also got bulk up in gen eight, which is another cool option for it um, that kind of you know sets it above Seismic Toad for me in gen eight, but in this gen I definitely prefer Toad, and I think it's gonna be great. Uh, really really sturdy rocker does job week in week out. It's gonna knock things off. It's gonna toxic. It's gonna skull burn things. It's gonna set up stealth rock. Um, it's gonna bring that one switch swim set per season. I feel like everybody that drafts Seismic Toad at least once a season brings switch swim Toad, uh, myself included. Uh, so definitely be on the lookout for it. But Toad really does just do its job, uh, and that's kind of what I was looking for here. I don't think I need to go super in depth on Seismic Toad. You know what it does. Next up, I want to grab a Pokemon that I can't grab in Gen 8 right now. Um, and I thought it would be a lot of fun. This Pokemon was incredibly underpriced in my opinion. I think we had like seven or eight point or eight or nine, I think something around there. Um, and again, it ticked a lot of boxes for me. It gave me a ground resist. It gave me more ways to kind of break through the things that Mawile and uh, Karen Black might not appreciate in Breloom. And I love Breloom. I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of it uh, just because it's not the bulkiest thing in the world, but it's a great, great edge quake resist. Um, I think if invested correctly, it can definitely be bulkier than you, um, you know, would think it is on the fist death side. At least that base 80 is kind of a little bit better than that base 60 60 on uh, HP and Spadef there. Uh, but defensively, you know, it has those niche poison heal uh, type matchups where it can be very, very annoying. Or it can be offensive with Technician and Mach Punch and Bullet Seed and Rock Tomb and Force Bomb and really, really punch holes through teams with that base 130 attack. Also, Spore, uh, probably one of the most spam moves in the game. Obviously, Grass types can switch on it and kind of block that Spore or the random Overcoat Mon, but Grass types can kind of switch in and block that Spore. However, uh, you know, they're not going to appreciate taking Force Palms or Superpowers or things like that. We might even be able to SD in their face depending on which Grass type they are, which is obviously great. Uh, we might force some safety goggles, which is always really nice. And uh, again, we can even go with those cheesy sub punch 
poison heal type sets and things like that. So I think this Pokemon is definitely really, really solid and was definitely really underpriced here um, in this uh, in this draft. So I'm pretty excited to get Breloom. I haven't used it in a long time, so I'm sorry if you guys heard yelling in the background. Goop is having a sleepover and there's uh, there's chaos and pandemonium in the house everywhere. So if you hear a little bit of yelling in this video, I think they're getting ready for bed, so whatever. Um, next up though, I wanted to grab uh, a better speed tier right now. I think the fastest Pokemon we have is uh, Victini. I want something around that 110 ish mark. Um, and I end up grabbing Persian because it also gives me a dark type. It gives me great, great momentum too into things like Malwa and Curum and uh, Victini and things like that. Right now, the only momentum we have was, I guess, Baton Mass Malwa, which I'm probably never running. Um, I'm just going to click a button with it. Uh, and U turn Victini, which I wanted more momentum uh, to get into those big threats. Um, get them in for free and kind of click buttons. We can do that with Parting Shot or U-Turn. We can obviously uh, just be a fat, annoying pivot with Fur Coat, uh, really checking a lot of things that we shouldn't. We can foul play things. We can knock off things. We can even punishment things because this is Generation 7. Uh, so we get cool moves like that back. I believe I can also Pursuit with this mod. Does it get Pursuit in this game? I don't, I don't know if uh, Persian gets Pursuit. It doesn't get Pursuit. That's interesting. Um, that's probably why I've never seen it run, even though it's not that strong in general. Uh, definitely a very, very weak one. 1675 in both of his attacking stats. Pretty weak. I have used Nasty Plot Persian in the past to great success, so maybe we could end up doing that uh, with like some Technician Cheese and you know Hidden Power being back in the game and things like that. Um, so definitely an option there. But again, great, great overall utility. Fast Taunt, Fast Twister Roo. Uh, we can toxic things to be a general nuisance and uh this isn't one of our z captains and even in week four now i'm still contemplating potentially making a transaction and changing this to our second z captain over another pokemon we have um for that z parting shot the z parting shot and get into curum and mobile and completely heal them up because i think that could be incredibly value i really just wanted to use a different mom with z because i liked a lot with z moves in gen 7 and i thought it would be fun um but objectively maybe curum was a better i mean Persian was the better choice for a second Z user. When you see the other one, let me know what you guys think I should do. Uh, I'm still definitely uh, waiting to see if we want to do that. Now, next up, I want to get that elite speed tier as well um, at some point in this draft. And I'm going to grab that this next round. But I also want to defog because unfortunately we're playing Gen 7. So I can't spam boots on every mod uh, and not have to worry about hazards anymore. Especially with things like Curum Black and Victini. I don't want rocks up on my side of the field. I don't want webs up on my side of the field. I don't want spikes up on my side of the field with Mega Mall while. Um, so I end up grabbing a really fast defogger in Crobat uh, because I think it's at least important to have that. It's pretty much a guaranteed defog off in a lot of different instances which is great base 130 speed obviously phenomenal utility outside of defog we can uh u-turn for momentum we can super fang we can taunt uh we can do a lot of annoying things like that we can even run you know nasty bat and things like that we don't get hurricane this gen unfortunately but we can air slash and heat wave and giga drain and sludge bomb and things like that uh which is obviously very very solid and there are some matchups where like ban bat does really really well um, despite it not really supposed to, you know, not really being supposed to, oh my gosh, how can I say this? It's not supposed to do that well. It also gives us a good fighting check. We'll grab another one here in a second, um, but right now we didn't really have a fighting exist that wasn't Victini. Um, that obviously doesn't want to catch a straight knock or EQ or Stone Edge. Uh, this doesn't want to take a Stone Edge either, but it takes the other ones pretty well, which is obviously nice. So uh, that's going to be Crobat. Next up, grab Cofagrigus. Uh, again, I thought it was really weak to find that I was a little spooked, so I grabbed Cofagrigus. It gives me T-Spikes, which I think are pretty solid on this team in some specific instances, but it also gives me Trick Room. Um, a little bit better of a Trick Roomer than something like Victini, uh, so we can get in that breaker like that Mega Mall out in the back to, you know, kind of click a button and do some damage. I also think that Cofagrigus is just good in Gen 7 in general. I love it with the Super Bear, and I'm really excited for Super Bears to be back. It's definitely a Pokemon to span that on, but OTR sets of its own. Uh, with just Nasty Pot Trick Room uh, doing some shenanigans can definitely be great. We can also Memento into the uh, mobile for like a pseudo teleport because uh, that doesn't work like that this gen, unfortunately, uh, which is obviously nice. We can Haze, we can knock off things, um, we can even Magic Coat, uh, we can Call Mind, we can Trick even. Uh, so this Pokemon has great, great defensive utility, and despite not having Body Press this gen, I still think it's very, very solid. Um, so excited for this one. Next up, we do grab that second Z user um in zergatry reason i grabbed zergatry here is because i actually felt like i had a lot of trouble baking really really bulky waters um and even with zergatry i feel like it's the only thing on my team that just reliably does so um 
but it's something at the very least. We made this our Z captain because uh, Zergatry one with a Z move at plus three with a tail glow because that is in this gen is an absolute nuke. Two, it's much better with hidden power in the game. We can HP ice things, which is again mwah, phenomenal. Uh, and three, the ability to run Z electric terrain or Z hypnosis to boost our speed as well as you know get that secondary effect of either setting up terrain for us to nuke things or putting things to sleep if we do hit that Z hypnosis on the opposing Pokemon is really, really solid. So offensively, this Pokemon is phenomenal with Z, and I think it can really break open games and really be a nuisance with Hidden Power plus Dazzle Gleam, Energy Ball, Thunderbolt, and uh, Tail Glow. Obviously, we can't run all of those things, but um, definitely something to keep in mind. It's good with a Scarf. Um, it's good with the Specs. I've even run AV Zergatry before. I've run Nasty Plot Salix sets before. Um, so there's definitely plenty of options outside of just like Z Herder Zergatry. Um, and I'm excited to use this mod Gen 7. I actually like it in Gen 8 even though it doesn't have Calm Mind or it doesn't have Tail Glow anymore um, Because I still think it's just so strong that it kind of makes up for it with that 173 But again, I still think it'll do pretty good. Um, next up, I need the Ghost Immunity <laughs> Didn't have one yet and my Ghost Resist was Persian. Now obviously Ghosts aren't as good this gen But they're as good against my team because I don't have that Pursuit Trapping Bulky Dark type uh, like you typically would in Gen 7, so I wanted to have a really good Ghost Immunity so I don't get smashed by those offensive ghosts as easily. And uh, we have Miltank right here. I've never really tried Miltank before, and if I have, it was a long time ago. It is a bit passive, um, but I think a big advantage to Miltank over a lot of other bulky normals is that base 100 speed, um, really allowing it to outspeed a lot of annoying bulky fat things uh, that are passive in their own right. So we can seismic toss things, earthquake, uh, we can throw off big returns and body slams and facades with Scrappy, Sap, Sipper, and Think Fat, three great abilities. Uh, we could Toxic and Thunder Wave things down, and it gives us another rocker, which I thought was really, really important up to this point. So um, I'm excited for Miltank. And then last up, we have like one or two points left. I don't remember how much, uh, but a very small amount of points left. And I end up grabbing Quilladin, because Quilladin gave me spikes, which I didn't have until this point. And I figured they could be my nice and niche matchup where someone has no removal. Or something like that uh, but it also gives me a little bit sturdier of a ground resist because right now it is as much as I love Breloom it is Breloom um, so if there is a matchup where I really need that really 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 bulky that grass um Kulidin can kind of spec in there and uh, you know do something for us so that's gonna be the team I kind of rambled a little bit <laughs> it's 15 minutes for a team builder for a movie so my bad get your popcorn we got four games to go over we'll be right back Alrighty, so week one, we are going up against Bredibus. Um, Really, really cool dude, and he has a really, really terrifying team. Um, he has the Garchomp, Mega Scizor, Tapu Fini, Scolipede, Snorlax, and Superior. Um, obviously, some other threats left on the bench, but these are the six he likes to bring, and they're probably the scariest six versus me, so definitely, definitely makes sense. Uh, the team we're rocking out with in this game in particular is we're rocking out with the Swords Dancing Mawile with Playref, Firefang, and uh, sucker, uh, sucker Punch, as well as, obviously, Sword Stance. Um, Lute does really well against this team. Uh, he really does not have a pivot into Mega Mawa, as most people don't, which is really, really nice. And then with our Victini, we have a four attack Sugar Berry variant with, I believe, Blue Flare, Thunderbolt, Glaciate, and U-Turn. Just great overall coverage. He obviously lacks and check us, but you know we can U-Turn out and really take advantage of that, in my opinion. Uh, we have a Choice Scarf Breloom. Uh, really good at revenging a Tapu Fini because I'm actually really, really weak to a Calm Mind Fini. If you look at my team, I don't deal with the super well, so I want to ensure that my Breloom has been a fast Calm Mind Fini. Um, it also gives me, you know, good uh, good ways of breaking through things like the, um, what do you call it? The Snorlax, which is great. We still have Mach Punch on it as well for the things that can be faster than us a little bit later on. And again, it's a Scarf that's faster than an SD Chomp. It can't scale shot up this gen, uh, so we can Bullet Punch, or uh, Bullet Punch, Bullet Seed past it or force palm if it's in range or you know a bunch of different options like that which is great uh, we have a three attacks with a berry berry here with ice beam earth power hidden power fire and roost can't hit the feeny um but i think i can pressure it enough with things like the teeny forcing it in, especially early game um and the rest of my team to kind of you know chip that thing down and outside of that um he doesn't deal with it super well again the snorlax but i feel like i have ways of exploiting snorlax and breloom and mawile which is great then we have a pretty physically defensive Rocky Helmet Seismitoad with rocks, um, obviously a great rocker this game. Checks the Guard Chomp, uh, can knock off items to be a genuine, uh, genuine, general nuisance overall. And then we have our Wind Con and our Zergatry. We're actually rocking out with Z Electric Terrain uh, with Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Ice, and Tail Glow in this game. That's really all we need is T Bolt, HP, Ice, if you look at his team. I got to chip down Lax a little bit maybe, but we want Z Electric Terrain over Z Hypnosis because of the, what do you call it? Um, 
the Misty Terrain from the Feeny, obviously, and it uh, really, really jacks up our Thunderbolts to where things like Snorlax actually aren't going to take plus three Thunderbolts very easily. Um, it didn't otherwise, but you know, just in case he's like AV, uh, really, really spadef lax, uh, that Power Boost could potentially come up clutch in my opinion. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Let me just slow it down a little bit. Um, we are going to lead off with our Victini as we see a Tapu Fini. Now turn one, I'm obviously going to U-turn out. Um, I don't want to uh, stay in, take a Scald, Surf, a Hydro Pump from the offensive Fini, um, just because I feel like it's not in my best interest, especially if he's like a Wakan Berry variant. Uh, my Thunderbolt's probably not too akin to most Feenies anyways, uh, unless he is really, really fast or really offensive or something like that. Um, so I feel like it is in my best interest to U-turn out. However, I don't have the best pivots in this thing, unfortunately. Um, so I am going to go ahead and U-turn out and go into my Seismic Totem. In my head, I'm thinking he must um, either be really, really fat or potentially Wakan Berry, in my opinion, uh, because I could just T-Bolt or like Banded Bolt Strike and do a ridiculous amount of damage. And if I am like a Banded variant, I think it is in my best interest to stay in and really attack this thing because I don't deal with it well. Fortunately, I'm not, so I'm going to make that pivot out. But it's interesting to see that Brett does end up staying in. Um, and in my head, I'm like, oh, he's for sure going for a water move. He's staying in. Um, but he actually elects to go for a Calm Mind. And not only that, you're going to see that he's not a Wakan variant. He has leftovers. So I found that play really interesting because I feel like I really, really could have punished him and uh, just raw to it KO'd him if I was a physical variant. Um, so just something to keep in mind. We're going to see Moonblast come out here. It's going to do 49. I'm actually going to elect to knock off here because I just don't do a lot of damage to this thing otherwise. And getting rid of its leftovers is more valuable to me at this point. I'm essentially going to have to stack off two Pokemon in order to beat this. It's just unfortunately a, a fact of a, a fact of me trying to beat this. I don't know. Um, I don't have great ways of beating it down. So I am going to go ahead and knock this thing off. Uh, we should live another one, which is great. And I can get a little bit more chip off potentially um, or get up rocks. We're going to see he gets a... Either he got a really low roll before and a really high roll there, or maybe um, you know, that was the middle. I don't know. Regardless, we are going to go down there um, at 51%. And I am kind of forced to write Breloom, which sucks, because Breloom's really good in this game. Uh, but I'm kind of forced to go into this and Bullet Seed, because I don't know how fast he is on his Feeny for my Zerk. And I need to tail glow into a Zeolite train in order to win. Um, and it is really my best win con at this point in my mind, too. And also the fact that if he's really offensive... Um, he can, you know, just potentially raw just Oko me at plus one if he's, you know, really fast or really offensive. So, uh, with like a Hydro Pump. Uh, so I definitely don't want to play around that. I'm going to go Breloom so that I can just Bullet Punch this, uh, Bullet Seed this thing in and, uh, hopefully put it in Victini's range. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go into it in Bullet Seed. You're going to see we're actually going to get four hits, which is really, really nice. I actually can't complain about that at all. Five hits wouldn't have killed, so it really doesn't matter. Um, and this really is great for me because now I can go into Victini. I know he's not Wakan. Uh, and I knocked him off anyways, and we're going to be able to T-Bolt and take it out. Now, next up comes Garchomp. Um, I'm going to take this Earthquake. I'm completely fine with taking this damage, because uh, I still do live that hit from uh, Scizor and check it naturally otherwise. And I want to punish a potential SD, because um, that actually just wins if he is SD and I do raw switch out. Like, the game is over, so I'm really glad that I am... Uh, Glaciate right here uh, and Shooka because I am going to be able to chew this up about 48% damage and get off a big Glaciate and drop this thing's speed um, and, you know, put myself in a pretty good spot. Now, I am going to Glaciate again. If he was Scarf, he would have taken me out there, but at least I have that information. Um, and that's really bad for me, actually, in fact, uh, and I can at least play right it from there. So, this next turn, I'm going a little fast. Right here, the Snorlax is going to come in on the Glaciate. Um, obviously, I'm going to U-turn out. I can't beat this thing 1v1. He knows I'm a Scar, so there's no reason to bluff it. I go Kyrim here. Not that my Kyrim can beat it, but one, because I want to scout. If he has Earthquake, um, he's probably going to go for it with his uh, with his Lax right here um, because it hits Victini as well as Ball Wild. So I definitely don't want to take that hit in the slightest. So Kyrim kind of forms that pivot. And also, too, if I'm Z Free Shock, he does not want to stay in and take that. We're terrible. We uh, go through a Thick Fat if that ends up being what he is, and he could potentially really be AV uh, Thick Fat in this matchup to kind of try and check a uh, special offensive Victini, which kind of rips the rest of his team. Um, and uh, obviously, he's not going to want to stay in and take that through uh, our terrible kind of breaking through that Thick Fat and uh, breaking through its weak physical defense. So I'm actually going to go cure him right here. Take a little bit from crunching that that's his coverage move of choice, which is interesting. And now I'm going to switch into uh, Victini or uh, Mobile. Unfortunately, I forgot to change it to Intimidate, so that's my bad. We were hyper -cutter for no reason. Uh, but he's going to make that switch into a scissor, probably scouting for that Z Free Shock, which is, um, again, completely fine with me because what I can do is this gives me that opportunity to SD 
that I don't really have against the rest of his team. I should take two bullet punches from this thing um, from full HP. And uh, again, we'll be in a pretty good spot as we are both going to mega up. He's going to bullet punch to about 38% as I do SD in his face. Uh, and this next turn, we're just going to fire fang and we knock the scissor right out. 100% damage. Now, next up he goes into Garchomp. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and reveal the sucker. Uh, if you wanted to play some mind games, it could have gotten a little bit iffy, but at least initially, no shot, I'm not going to sucker. Um, I obviously knocked that thing out from that range, and there's no reason to not go for that. So we're going to knock out the Garchomp right there. And from this point, it's like, oh man, I can just win the game. Um, I got to win some 50-50s. Uh, and if Skull Beam comes out, I'm probably actually a little bit more liable to potentially Fire Fang the first time. I don't know, because uh, SD actually does also potentially win the game. Um, I don't think he's Z Skullipate. I believe he's Z Azelf as his other Z Captain, but still can definitely win the game um, if he's like Mega Horn or something like that. I believe that kills my Karen from that, or even Superpower for some reason instead of Earthquake. So I might have attacked that to prevent that. Um, but I knock out the lax and I probably soccer punch the superior until he shows like the lair or something like that. But uh, next up, Snorlax comes out, which is interesting. I go for a player off and I unfortunately miss. Showing me that he doesn't really have a way around my Mawile with these things in the back. Um, so I'm pretty sure I just won from that position. Um, the fact that he went this first instead of the other two maybe would have influenced me to just click sucker in front of them. Uh, unfortunately, we are going to go down here, but. Due to the information that I had early in the game, he clicked Quantrum and Victini, he facaded to knock me out here. Um, my best win con right now is going for game with Zergatry, or at least going for a really big break with Zergatry. Because I don't think he has Earthquake, and if he doesn't, I live two facades, and I can set up in this thing's face and potentially do some big, big damage. Um, and potentially just break through it all together. So, we are going to go down to the facade right there. I am going to see this as my Zergatry opportunity though, we're going to go into it. I'm going to tail go up as he does go for the facade, which is great. Now, if he wasn't, um, if he wasn't facade and he has Earthquake, I still lived and I could just T-Bolt and claim a KO, which is still valuable. Um, but being that he facaded me right there, I'm like 99% sure, unless he's absolutely baiting me, um, that he does not have Earthquake. So I'm just going to pop off the Z-Electric Terrain this turn, get that plus one speed, set up Electric Terrain for myself again. And we're going to Thunderbolt, and we're going to just raw knock out this Lax. I don't know if that crit mattered. It might have if he was AV, but good lord, that just died from 75. And it's always nice to knock out Lax with a special neutral move from so high. So that was pretty cool. We're going to see Serp come out. That kind of pissed me off that he either Scarf Serp or he uh, just simply does not have Protect on his Scolipede. Um, regardless, my play right here is to just HP Ice. We're going to just raw knock out this superior, get up to plus five, and uh, out comes Scolipede. Does not have Protect, and we're going to knock it out and win this game uh, 3-0. Really, really scary. There was a lot of things that could have gone wrong in this game. I won't pretend like this was like a very well-played game by me or completely well-positioned. Um, I lost to SG Chomp if that thing got out of hand. Uh, if it did have Protect on the Scolipede, or if it was Scarf Serp, that was potentially really scary. Um, if it was SD Scolipede, there was a potentially scary endgame. Um, the Tapu Fimi, if it was more offensive, I was uh, potentially in a bad spot there with my Toad. I might not have you know, been able to get that knock off off. So uh, there really, really was uh, a lot that could have gone wrong this game, but just enough things went right. And then obviously a player of miss really boned me. Um, but obviously, just enough things went right for me to, you know, scrape by with a W here against uh, good old Brett. But yeah, good game to Brett. We'll jump ahead to week two. All right, week two, we play against my good boy, Nathan. Um, good old Newt, uh, with probably the most Nathan team of all time, minus maybe a lot of us. But uh, he has some certified Nathan classics like Mew, Tyrantrum is a Nathan mod if I've ever seen one, Alolan Ninetales, Infernape, Mega Gyarados, which again, exudes big Newt energy, and the Nido Queen, but he obviously had some other threats that he left on the bench. Uh, particularly Sand Slash Alola really scared me, but he didn't end up like that, so thank god. Um, but we have a pretty interesting team here that we are rocking out with. Uh, biggest threats to me off rip is one Infernape. I don't have a great Infernape counterplay in general, though. Uh, we kind of have to use a multitude of Pokemon to try and check it depending on what it's set into being. Um, I think we can mix Life Orb set would absolutely ruin my day. Uh, but we'll see if he ends up bringing that. I don't have great counterplay to that in general, just besides offensively checking it. Um, but Mega Gyarados really, really scared me on matchup. Like, absolutely terrified me. I feel like it could absolutely rip through my team if I was unprepared. Uh, obviously, Mew is very annoying. Um, and Nidoqueen was really hard for me to switch into as well. Um, and Tyrantrum was something I definitely kind of slept on in prep, I won't lie. Um, was a little bit underprepared for it, but I think we have the team to do it. Uh, first up, we have a really fun 
really defensive, almost pretty much maxes up a little bit of speed Breloom. Uh, Rock Knight was Toxic Protect, Seed Bomb, and uh, Leech Seed to kind of keep ourselves healthy in conjunction with to uh, Poison Heal plus Protect. Uh, really, really solid Mega Garrett check, actually. Now, if it is Ice Fang and he does kind of prep for us a little bit, uh, we do take a plus one out of an Ice Fang pretty uh, comfortably um, after multiple, multiple switches to rocks, obviously, because we resist that, which is great. Uh, and we can stay at a range with our Poison Heal pretty easily which is again really really solid so i was really just kind of here to check that thing it's pretty useless otherwise i guess we do soft check tyrantrum as well uh but we don't have a fighting with go it so like plus one outrage is gonna kind of nuke us or just like outrage in general will probably do a chaos tyrantrum and we're still a breloom as physically defensive as we are um next up though we have a choice scarf victini with uh v create u-turn bolt strike and brick 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 raise is if it, it, bleh, is in case i need to get rid of screens potentially Bolt Strike, obviously, for Gear. Um, and uh, Brick Break, I guess, hits Tyrantrum as well for a little bit of damage. But we're just going to be clicking V-Create U-Turn 90% of the time, which is obviously great. Uh, we have a 4 attack Mega Mawa. Just max attack, max HP on this one. Uh, pretty simple with Stabs, Sucker Punch, and Brick Break again for those screens because it's going to be my main pivot into that Ninetales. He wants to get up screens. Uh, screens. They're going right away. Um, he doesn't switch into Mega Mawa whatsoever. Just like, again, nobody really does. Um, player plus Iron Head kind of kills everything on his team, no matter what he tries to do about it. So that's obviously great. Then we have a Kieran Black. Uh, we're an Adamant set. We're actually, I believe, Dragon Claw, Fusion Bolt, Home Claws, and Roost with Electric Z. Um, with Aggressive Creeps, we could get into an Adamant uh, set, which is really, really nice. And if you look at his team, it's not appreciate a plus one uh, Z Fusion Bolt or just plus one Dragon Claws or just Dragon Claws in general. Um, his fairy is that a little bit nine tails. I almost wanted to go outrage, but I still didn't want to walk. Um, you know, yeah, understandably so. Then we have a pretty physically defensive uh, Grigus with, I believe, Shadow Ball, Pain Split, I want to say. Toxic Spikes and Grass Knot. Grass Knot is not Mega Gear, so it's at least not completely free setup um, for him in our face. Uh, we can get up the C-Spike, which is really great once the Needle Queen goes down to, uh, you know, really, really wear down his team and uh, put things in range of Victini, um, let things get kind of stalled out a little bit better, like Bra by Breloom, put things in range of Sucker Punch from Mawile, put things in range of that uh, Kieran that we just talked about and things like that. I really do like the T-Spikes potentially. Uh, really wearing down his team and uh, things like the Mew and the Mega Gyarados once the Mega Balls and uh, you know things like that. So that could be potentially valuable if we do get rid of that Needle Queen. And then we have an Assault Vest, decently offensive but pretty darn for Death Size Metode. Um, pivots into the Needle Queen and actually exerts some pretty decent offensive pressure here outside of that gear, but it's not going to want to take Earthquakes once it Megas. And uh, we do have Power Up Punch, so we're not the most passive thing in the world. Maybe Drain Punch would have been a little bit better, but I wanted to you know sauce with the Power Up Punch Toad. I just thought it would be funny at the very least. So, that being said, whew, I'm only two battles in, and I'm already getting tired. Let's jump into it. As I'm on fast mode, unfortunately, so let's go back in normal speed. We're going to jump in. I'm going to lead off with my Mega Mawile. He leads off with Mew. Um, I don't want to get Wisps whatsoever. I want to kind of scout and see what this goes for. So I go into my Coffee Grigus, and I get this off a pretty free Shadow Ball. No reason to T-Spike up at this point, obviously, because the new Queen's still alive. We do about 30. We see no Black Sludge, which uh, may indicate that it's Life Orb. Uh, it could always be another item as well, but Rocks are going to go up right here. As I do go hard into my uh, Seism Toad, and I get a free knockoff right here. Knocking off this Light Clay from this Ninetales, which is, again, really, really solid for, uh, for me in this instance. Um, one, because I get the information that he's uh, obviously going to be a Roar Veil on this thing. And two, uh, gives me a nice and free switch in to my Mega Mall Wild to exert some offensive pressure right here. As Nathan is going to go for a freeze dry, it's going to do a decent shot because I'm still a regular Mall Wild, but now, since he didn't uh, set up screens especially, I can kind of come in with this thing and just click play rough. The only resist at this point is a Needle Queen, and I don't think he's going to go Needle Queen the slightest, because if I Iron Head, he just raw dies. Um, he's not going to take that hit very well. Uh, so I definitely feel very comfortable clicking play rough right here, because pretty much everything on his team is going to drop to that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go right for that player. fist. Infernape comes in, potentially expecting the Iron Head, but again, I had no reason to click it, and that thing goes down, and I don't remember. Um, Newt sent me his team after, I think. I don't remember if it was like a mixed life orb set or if it was scar or whatever. Regardless, it was a big threat to my team. And the fact that it's gone already is so nice for this endgame. So Mobile putting in some work really early on here. Next up is Needle Queen. I'm gonna save this thing. I'm gonna go right into my seismic toad because I am AV. I do take two life orb hits from here. As you're gonna see, that is life orb for sure with that 36% damage. Um, and this next turn I am gonna go for a knockoff. Maybe a little bit of an overplay, but um, I at least wanted to uh, you know uh, 
I, I wanted to catch like a switch into like Mew or something like that if you wanted to like to look at that. But I guess Garo was another play from him. Regardless, we're gonna go down uh, and I'm going to go into my Victini and just click V Create Revenge off this Needle Queen, which is great because that means I can T Spike up as this Gyarados comes in and it's probably going to Mega at this point. And if it does Mega Evolve, then um, it's obviously gonna get hit by that T Spike as well. Nothing really wants to take that at, at this point. So Gyarados does come out. I'm gonna go hard Breloom as I don't really have another play right here as I believe he is just going to click um, Crunch. I don't think he clicks Waterfall yet. Crunch, don't do a lot of damage. We are max Fizz Def. I did 24 and I just get to throw off a very free Toxic here. And we're able to catch the Mew and this is honestly better than, you know, getting that T-Spike off on it because it's gonna, you know, progressively take more and more damage the more it wants to on this field. I can protect and kind of scout and see what it wants to go for. It should wish, I'm not afraid to set up at this point really. Um, as he does go for a Psychic right there, showing he does at least have the stab, so I can't very uh, comfortably stay in on this guy right here. So we are going to switch out into our Victini to potentially take that Psychic a little bit better. We still can't switch him one more time on Rocks, which again, very, very nice. So the next turn, I am just gonna U-turn out on this Tyrantrum because again, don't think V-Create was uh, in my best interest when Gara and Tyrantrum are there. And then I can go out into my Cough Grigus and set up that T-Spike that I was kind of talking about a little bit. Um, really just poisoning those last three members as they come in next time. Next up, the Ninetales is going to come in. It's going to go Dark Pulse, which is definitely, definitely interesting. Um, I suppose it covers, like, uh, Victini as well, um, and just does more damage to Cough and Grigus, uh, if you didn't have, like, Blizzard. I think Blizzard might do more. I don't know. Maybe Headcalcs might suck, but regardless, um, this does even less than, uh, you know, something like Blizzard, Moonblast, or Freeze Drive would really do to me. Uh, so I'm able to get pretty freely into my Mega Mawile, and this next turn, I'm going to put Brick Break, because, um, one, this whole team doesn't really appreciate it outside of that Mew. And if that Mew comes in, it takes Hail plus uh, Poison damage. And like an Iron Head, it might just raw die. If not, it's going to be really, really low. Um, so if you want to pivot into something like Gara on that, I can Brick Break it. Still at least do super effective damage after that Poison. Same thing with Tyrantrum, though they obviously don't want to take Player of an Iron Head respectively. But it also stops that screen from going up and I think keeping screens away is more important than me claiming an immediate KO with Mawile personally so I am going to just go for that brick break um this next turn as I believe Newt just goes for a Moonblast doing about 21% which is fine um we still do 71 with that neutral brick break which is insane uh, he is gonna try and get cheeky set that screen but nope not gonna allow it today sir uh and we are going to get rid of that right here as Tyrantum's gonna come out this next turn I have no reason to not sucker. I died a hail anyways, um, but we actually do end up getting a crit, which is really nice because I think this thing was actually Scarf, uh, so it could have actually been a pretty big threat if we didn't end up critting, uh, depending on what move to lock throughout the game. Uh, because of the fact of me getting this crit, I'm able to sucker, crit, bring it down into range of that poison, which is going to give uh, us another KO right here and really put us in a solid spot. Next up, Mew's going to come out. I go into my Karen Black on the double, double, uh, uh, the double down. Don't want to get burned again. I'm a physical set, so I am going to go into my Cough of Grigus. This next turn, I'm actually going to go ahead and click Grass Knot. Now, uh, Newt does end up saying it'll store the play, and it might look like a little bit of an overplay me clicking Grass Knot, but I didn't want to allow in the Gyarados for free as I found it much, much scary because I don't have Mock Punch on my Breloom. Um, and uh, it getting up to plus two could, you know, essentially spell the end of the game. Uh, I want to click Grass Knot to prevent that thing from switching in. Um, and setting up on me because I would just spam grass on at that point. Uh, because I feel pretty comfortable with this Mew. I know I can switch and take one more rock uh, thing with my Victini. And I can V create this thing down because I'm Scarf. I can V create two times in a row before he's uh, faster than me. So he can't soft boil assault me with the poison on him, which is again really, really good information to have. Um, or a good position for me not good information so i am gonna click the grass knot we do live the psychic um unfortunately we can't get big shadow ball chip off right here uh but really it's completely fine as this thing is going to be at about 67 um i do die to a psychic here but if he doesn't soft with he dies to toxic we do about 62 percent right there with the uh the uh, v crate and uh he's definitely in range of the next one and we are still indeed faster due to the fact that we were scarfed in this game so that's obviously phenomenal um, last up is this Mega Gyarados, and as long as we don't get Ice Fang flinched if he has it, this game is in the bag for us because he is going to drag an up, but like I said, I guarantee he'd live this hit. It's just a matter of that flinch, um, or crit, I suppose, but we do end up not getting flinched. We do about 60% right there, which is great, um, and this game is sealed because of that T-Spike that ended up being really clutch for both this and the Mew, um, putting it in range of the rest of our team. So I am going to just protect right here, I'm trying to try and double protect. Uh, 
but unfortunately it doesn't work out. So Burlem's gonna go down without getting a KO, but it put in a ton of work this game. And um, we're able to grab a pretty nice dub here against Nathan 2-0. It was a very, very close game. I think we played this game a little bit better than week one. Um, and uh, we were kind of able to overcome some really, really scary offensive threats uh, against us. But that's gonna be the second game. Let's jump on to week three. Alrighty guys, week three came along and we were playing Kurt the Buzzwell. He's a really, really scary team. He's a big, big threat to my team in particular. Sorry. Um, Terrakion being one of them the first one that he has. Uh, we don't have great Terrakion counterplay over the course of the game. I have Kofagra, which is a good initial check. Um, but throughout the game, it gets a little bit more iffy and scary. Dio uh, speed is always really scary, especially because I think it's a Z cat, and I think Dio speed with Z is really, really terrifying to deal with, especially nasty plot variants. Um, and my steel not being the bulkiest thing in the world means it can kind of push through me a little bit. Uh, Suicune, always a genuine nuisance, uh, but I think we actually have a pretty good Suicune matchup. Crocodile, another Pokemon I don't switch into very well, at least with the team that I brought. Mega Pidgeot is probably the biggest issue on this team. Uh, in the sense that my flying resists are Mega Mawile and Zergatry, and Mega Mawile gets just killed, I think, by Hurricane into Heat Wave, and Zergatry is a Zergatry. It just gets totally KO'd in general. Uh, so, a little bit scary, but we have some pretty scary offensive threats on our side as well. Uh, we have an Ice Beam, Earth Power, Toxic Roost, ICMZ, Kyurem. Uh, I think it does really, really well. If I can Toxic that Suicune before it gets behind a sub, I'm in a pretty good spot. Um, don't want to get PP saw out of fusion bolts, uh, so didn't even end up bringing it. Uh, we're ICMZ so that things like the Dio speed can't just like raw set up in our face. It also gives us a nuke against the Gudra if it is assault vest in this matchup, which I do expect it to be. Uh, then we have a rocking Milton with rocks, obviously, milk drink, seismic toss, and toxic. Very annoying for him to break. Um, decent enough non taunting uh, Dio check, but if it's taunt Dio, it's probably not nasty, but I don't think he has the move slots for that in this matchup. Um, and uh, we can, you know, again, fast taunt the Suicune. I mean, fast talk to the Suicune, the Crook, uh, soft check the Pidgeot, things like that. And again, be a genuine use. So I think Milton's actually very, very good in this matchup and have consistent damage besides with Tox. Um, uh, so yeah, pretty solid. Then we have a Life Orb Braylon with just SD3 attacks with Bullet Seed, Bach Punch, and Force Palm. <laughs> really, really good in this game. Uh, he does not switch into Breloom in the slightest. Uh, Mock Punch just like raw to a KO's Guru, which is crazy um, because this one's so freaking strong. Uh, so I'm definitely excited for that. It gives me a great revenge killer as well to uh, Terrakion, Crocodile, Beacon Pidgeot, uh, things like that. Then we have, I believe, uh, just a 4 attacks model, either that or SD4 attacks. Uh, our SD3 attacks. I wish I could have five moves in Mawile. That'd be kind of broken. Again, does not switch into Mawile very well, but nobody does. We have an Ayapapa Berry Trick Rooming uh, Kofagrigus. I believe we also have Nasty Plot. I believe we're Nasty Plot. Um, Shadow Ball HPIs, I want to say. Uh, trick Room. Not only is the Trick Room nice for ourselves, uh, but it's also nice for our Mega Mawile if we do end up going down. In the meantime, it gives us a soft Terrakion check. We're not too AKO by Stone Edge, which is great. Uh, and then we have a choice Scarf Zergatry. Uh, I'm hoping what happens is I can learn him into a false sense of security. See if he to it kills me. Um, after like rock switch and stuff like that, leaves his Pidgeot in, and we can like you know bolt switch out or T bolt to just kill it, uh, which is great. So. Now that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Make sure we're on normal speed this time. Uh, he is going to lead off with his Pidgeot. I lead off with my Zergatry. I lead off with Zergatry because I felt like Pidge was a pretty free lead. You know, like my entire team. So I wanted to have a lead that kind of dealt with that. Now expecting to switch out right here. Uh, I'm actually going to go for a Dazzling Lane because it covers both the Crocodile and the Gudra. It gives me information on both of them. Um, I think Gudra was definitely his better play. So it definitely makes sense to win that. But even if I both switch and get Woman, um, it's it's not worth the risk of him going Croak and me not switching into Croak very well. So I am just going to Dazzling him right here. <laughs> Do 31% showing me that's for sure AV because I'm a modest circuitry. So that's a pretty nice calc. Um, I am going to go into Mill Tank because since I know it's AV, I know I beat it 1v1 easily. As he is just going to go for a Fire Blast, maybe expecting the Maul to come in very aggressively, but no reason to make that play. Um, and we're thick fast, so we that up. Now, this play, I am going to get very free rocks, which is going to be great in chipping down the rest of his team, especially that Pidgeot as Crocodile comes hard out right here. I'm going to go for a Toxic as he rocks up himself, um, showing that he is indeed faster, but not that big of a deal as I can just Toxic in this next turn uh, as knockoff into Earthquake will not KO me and if he has like superpowers so be it. Um, so I am just going to spam Milk Drink at this point um, and once I actually I'm not going to spam because once I see this right in my head 
I'm like, Kurt wants to get offensive momentum right here, right? I've toxic him. He sees that he does not break through me with knock and earthquake, right? And if you click earthquake, he's got secret power. So I think he's gonna go hard to rack here because I think it puts me in a pretty terrible spot uh, when it gets to come in for free on like a mill thing. I think that stone edge is incredibly, incredibly free. And my cofaggers can only come in so many times doing that. So I'm actually going to make a double out into my Breloom. And I actually felt like it was a relatively safe double. Because only not only if he made this play did it make me look like, you know, pretty cool. <laughs> um, but it also covered him just earthquaking me Because I, uh, I still do resist that. Even though it's going to do a chunk, I at least resist it. But thankfully I get like the first part of the play right. As he does go into the Terrakion. And I just get a free mock Punch here. I don't think he's going to be able to afford to go into the Dio. Just because of the fact if I bullet seed there, knowing he's gonna switch, uh, Dio just like dies to that into like uh, mock punch. So I don't think he's gonna give that up. Uh, so I pretty much have a free mock punch uh, right here to really chip something down. Gudra ends up coming in, probably sap sipper, it's 53%. Um, and we're gonna be able to two a KO that Gudra and just knock it out. So big KO for Braylon right there. Out comes Pidge. I know I don't kill here from a mock with a mock punch, though I do come close. I am able to get into my Zerga tree as he has U turn out, so definitely fair play. He goes on his Terrakion now. While I'm Scarf, he also might be Scarf, so we're gonna go on to our Cofagagus. The Sterna just come out, only just 32, so we confirm he's not a boosting item at the very least. As Crook comes out, and I'm actually gonna make yet another double into our Karen Black. No shot, you're just gonna give me this Terrakion, um, especially because Wisp is a very, you know, plausible play. Uh, burning this thing makes it essentially useless versus me, um, and it is really really good for me in this end game if he can get rid of uh Kofagris, he can just click close combat and almost win the game as if Mawa gets a little bit of chip so definitely not my best interest to do so uh in his best interest to let this thing get burned so i'm gonna make that double into karen black and uh i'm just gonna get to click ice beam on this crocodile which is again phenomenal if he wants to go into suicune i just talk to get the turn after and i'm in a fine spot um so i am just gonna ice beam knock out the crook again be in a phenomenal spot out comes the suicune next which again completely fine with me i just go for toxic but i miss um <laughs> Unfortunate, but thankfully he doesn't sub up because I would have been in a really bad position if he did. Um, he's going to protect right here as a U Toxic. Um, so again, uh, a little bit unfortunate I missed that first Toxic. Doing this thing on the timer would have been absolutely amazing for me. I'm going to Toxic again in case he does want to leave it in. In hindsight, maybe Earth Power was my play just because of the fact I don't think he can let this thing get Toxic. Um, and he's really been adamant about trying to get this track out in, which is completely fair because it kind of smashes me. Um, but he's been adamant about getting this Terrakion in so he can click a button. Uh, and I am going to go Toxic in. While I get Rocks and Toxic chip off on this, still not a good trade for me. Because now I kind of have to go into, you know, Kofagris. Now if I do take a Stone Edge, I should be put in Iron Popper range. And then get that health back and lift another one. Um, but he is actually going to elect to go for a close combat here. Which is honestly completely fine with me. As he goes down to 64, his next turn I just go for a Shadow Ball. In hindsight, maybe Trick Room was a little bit better of a play. Um, but it's not that big of a deal, as I am just going to go hard Zergatry right here. Um, this kind of scenario that I was talking about a little bit earlier comes into play right here. As uh, he is going to go ahead and click Hurricane on just 40% to me, which is pretty nuts. Uh, but he is going to kind of be loading that full sense of security. Maybe thinking I'm sacking it off because it sucks versus the rest. Uh, and I'm just going to Thunderbolt and knock it out. Now, the reason I Thunderbolt instead of Volt Switch is, it really, one, it really doesn't matter that much. But two, is I think that Thunderbolt kind of forces him into something like a Deoxys or a Terrakion and forces him to lock into a move or just kill me with the Deoxys and not set up. Opposed to me Volt Switching, I have to go and take Rocks and he gets a more advantageous switch. So this is an instance I felt like it wasn't good for me to click Volt Switch because I'm fine with letting Zergachi go down now that it's uh, killed his Pidgeot. And Thunderbolt just killed something otherwise too. So it's like, once I got this in, I was getting a KO, um, but Scarf Terrakion is faster than me. The Ox speed is obviously faster than me, and I could potentially take advantage of Speedcoon, but um, not in my best interest in my first. So. Down goes the Pidgeot. We get it to plus one. Dio speed comes out. I know I don't not speed this, but I'm not going to let Nasty pop free in my face. So I just Thunderbolt as I get taken out by Psychic right here. Next up, out comes my Mawile. I have a very free play off right here. Don't have to play around with Sucker Mind games or anything like that. As the Suicune is going to come in, and despite this being a Suicune, uh, it's going to take a whole 57%, which is amazing for me. Uh, unfortunately, it's not enough to KO it or put it in Sucker Punch range, so I am going to pivot out into my Kyrim, because uh, I know I can take a Skull Lifter Rocks pretty comfortably, even if I do get burned. Thankfully, we don't, though, and uh, this next turn, as he protects, I'm actually going to just roost up um, and uh, put myself in a good spot. But with a good play comes a pretty bad play. I'm going to Toxic again. Again, there's no reason for him to let this get Toxic. I don't think he, any university is going to try and do so. Um, but I was also pretty uh, 
pretty uh, hesitant of him potentially going to track out because if I just ice beam earth power, it's obviously pretty much dead at that point. I might have just died to ice beam. I don't know what the calc off the top of my head. I feel like it dies though. Um, but I am gonna go for a toxic and basically give this track out a free switch in. Uh, very, very passive play by me. I probably should have just ice beamed or earth powered as I just don't think it was in his best interest to stay in. Um, I am gonna go to Microfragus. Uh, he's gonna close combat right here. I would have potentially died to a stone edge right here, but it would at least give me a free switch in this like, kicking gray loom, which I think is very, very important uh, and could have been, you know, really advantageous for me. Unfortunately, it's not going to put me in my berry range, uh, but I do get a very free shadow ball at this point, which is great. So you can, is going to come out. It's going to take rocks into a shadow ball. In hindsight, um, there's a couple plays I could have made better in this end game. One was obviously ice beam or earth powering on that track out. Two, I should have trick roomed right here. Um, I think if I trick room, I win the game with Mawile plus go fag and just very, very easily. Um, because even if I don't kill with this next shadow, oh, with a trick room to shadow ball, which I obviously don't, what I can do is I can go into Maul Wild. Though he does have protect, so he can potentially stall it out maybe, but again, um, we'll see how that, you know, we could have seen how that ended up going. But uh, two is I shadow ball right here. I get the drop. What I should have done is I should have saved this. I should have gone to like Suicune or Kyurem or something like that, because Kyurem gets a free kill with Earth Power and Ice Z if he goes into the Deoxys. I kill this thing and I kill this thing from here. Um, but if I save this, I come and take rocks again, I get my eye of Papa, and I get back out of range of another stone edge, which gives me another out against the track end. So, um, despite me still being in a great position, I could have put myself in a better position. I think it's important that we at least mention that. Um, to be fair, I was also playing this game. Uh, I do crit, get crit right here, but I think I died anyways. I don't know. Um, to be fair, also, I was playing this game at work on my phone, uh, just because that's the only time we could really play. It's just Aussie time zones and my time zone doesn't really match up too great with my work schedule right now. Um... So maybe we would have played a little bit more focus if I wasn't playing uh, at the front desk. But regardless, GoFag's going to go down right here. Uh, but because of the Spadef drop, I feel pretty darn comfortable going into Kyurem and just clicking Earth Power at this point. He is just not going to protect um, as I do knock him out right there. Terrakion is going to come out next. I am just going to sack this off to see what he ends up locking into, uh, which is going to be the close combat, uh, which is, again, completely fine. And uh, at this point, I can kind of just go into play room. I'm going to lock punch. No reason to overplay right there. If he goes in the Dio, I'll probably just bullet punch at that point. Or no, I'll probably, um, what do you call it? Go hard mall while in case he's set up or something like that. Because um, I don't want him setting up. Uh, and I want to keep this in the back for mock punch. So regardless, he's going to stay in, so we're kind of hypothetical about hypo, hypo, I don't know. I can't talk. It's midnight. Um, but we're going to knock up the track down, go down to a psychic crit. Obviously, it didn't matter. Then go into mall well. He's just a nasty pot to play around, you know, like Sucker Punch mind games. But I got no reason to play those games. I'm just going to knock you out from 76 and uh, grab a 2-0 victory. Probably could have had better differential. I think I could have played the game a lot tighter. Um, but a win's a win. And I'll take being 3-0 to start the season. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have one more game. We'll be right back with that. All right, week four, last battle of this video. We're going against uh, Oliver or Porpoise, Porpoise. I don't know how to say it. Awesome dude though. Uh, and he has a really, really scary team here. Uh, we'll go over what he has and what we're bringing really, really quick. Just so you know that going forward. Uh, he has a Mega Tyranitar, really scary versus our team. Um, really uh, can kind of rip through us with just stabs alone. This one's so strong, it's so bulky. Um, and if it just had like Fire Punch or Breloom or something of the sorts, uh, it can kind of rip through our team because it also hits them all while pretty hard. Uh, so you gotta be very careful. Manchow can be very scary because Brox plus uh, Probat is a good combination with it taking hits. And obviously we can't be boots and Even if we were, he could just knock us off and kind of do us dirty from there. So we gotta be very careful about that thing. Uh, we have a Nido King. Nido King's just as scary as Nido Queen. Actually more scary versus our team than Nido Queen. So we don't switch into that thing very well. Gotta be careful. We're not even bringing like the AV Toad uh, tech. We actually have no switch into Nido King. So we gotta be very careful about that. Celesteela can be scary offensively and just annoying defensively as per Gen 7 Steela. Uh, whether it wants to Z-move or Leech Protect, it's going to be annoying and I don't like it. Uh, at least when it's on the other side. Clef, another annoying Pokemon, and then Latias. So, uh, really, really cool balanced team here from uh, Porpoise. And uh, hopefully we have the squad to take on. We have an SD, Fire Fang, I believe, Play Rough, and Sucker Punch. Mega Mawile, just really good this game. Phenomenal win con. In all honesty, um, it can really, really punch a hole through this team otherwise, which is great. We have a Kyurem with Ice Beam, Earth Power, Roost, and Free Shock with the Ice Z. That Ice Beam into like a, or like an Ice Beam into a Free Shock from, a, or Z Free Shock, sorry. Jeez, I'm stumbling over my words. Late. Um, 
nukes things like Clef and Celestela uh, and Earth Power into Free Shock should kill most T Charmander. Uh, we'll see, you know, kind of, especially if he has a little bit of chip on him, uh, but he does a ton of damage regardless. Then we have a Choice Scarf Fictini, pretty simple stuff with Trick, U-Turn, Bolt Strike, I want to say, and V-Create. Then we have a Fizz Def Rest Talk, Rocky Helmet Toad, really good check to that Tyranitar, where I'm leaving ourselves a little bit more open to the Needle King, since we're not running AV this time, but uh, I feel like Tar was actually a bigger threat, because we're not running a defensive Breloom like we did for the Mega Gyarados. Um, so something to keep in mind. We have a Defong and Crobat as well. This thing had crazy four moveset syndrome this week. Uh, we are Brave Bird, Super Fang, Roost, and Defog. I also really want U-Turn. I also really wanted Taunt, uh, but I feel like Super Fang was at least nice to kind of punish that Silly for 50% coming in. Um, I felt more comfortable hard switching around Silly than, you know, having to catch it with U-Turn. I'd rather catch it with the Super Fang. Uh, it's great chipping other things down as well. Uh, we have Defog. Uh, not only because hazards are really annoying for things like Kiram and Victini and Crobat, um, three things weak to rocks that are incredibly important on this team. Uh, I guess Defong for yourself isn't the best, but also he had webs as a potential, and I did not want to deal with webs. Webs were really annoying for our team as well, so uh, I ended up teching Defog on there at the end. And then we have a Life Orb 3 attacks Breloom with Spore as its last move to uh, potentially put something to sleep. Now, Breloom is a little bit meh on matchup if you look at Shelly, Clef, Lottie. Uh, but putting one of them to sleep is incredibly valuable for me. So if you want to give me one of them and put them to sleep, I'll definitely take it. We gotta be careful, like, sleep talk, spec, slotty, or something like that. But I think we can definitely do it, uh, you know, with the uh, with the team we have right here. Let's go ahead and jump into it, though. He's gonna lead Cliff Able. I am going to lead my Crobat. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and Super Fang. The real reason I let off with the Crobat was I wanted to potentially not be put in a tough spot and put it initially in the Vortex by that Mian Xiao. Um, but after the Super Fang, you're gonna see this Clef Rocks go up pretty fine with me because I can just defog them away immediately and if this is his rocker much better than it being Nido King which comes in next year which is really scary but um we get away those rocks uh and I'm gonna go hard Victine on Nido King which is definitely a very aggressive play but don't want to let this uh Crobat go down I definitely don't think he's ground moving this early in the game don't think he needs to be that aggressive um uh, but I think I do need to be a little bit aggressive myself in order to put myself a little bit better of a position uh, as we are going to take that ice up pretty easy and then I am going to U-turn out uh, as this T Tar comes in, if it was a, we see that it's a really offensive Tar via that U turn damage. Um, and even though it's not Mega yet, um, if it was like a Mega, uh, like a really bulky Pursuit Trapping variant, obviously we don't want to V create um, because we're pretty much trapped and dead because we're scarfed. Um, and even if we weren't, we can turn after and still get Pursuit Trap. So figured I kind of have to click U uh, V create until this thing is in range. Um, or I can potentially just raw lose it, depending on what his set actually is. So we're gonna use turn out of there, go right into Breloom, and this is a very, very free spore, as I should uh, outspeed the tar and put something to sleep as. Out comes the Celesteela, I will definitely take that. Now, if I Life Orb super powered there, uh, which we did have, uh, this silly would have taken a lot of damage and been in range of our Mawile, but not that big of a deal. Unfortunately, I forget Intimidate on our Mawile again, but you know what? It happens, this is a friendly. Uh, I'm gonna go into Mawile hard though, because I do see this as an opportunity to set up and really punch a hole. Uh, he is gonna elect to stay in and let me get that free setup turn. Uh, lucky for him though, he does end up waking up, I think after just one turn of sleep, uh, which is really good for him, as I SD into Fire Fang, but he protects. Now, I do kill most Jelly variants. We also saw that we're faster than him, so I feel pretty comfortable staying and going for that Fire Fang, because if I can eliminate this thing, it really just kind of is a big uh, weight off my chest. It also makes Crobat a lot better, because that's a very offensive tar. Um, he's shown to not want to switch it in on it, and he doesn't have a flying resist otherwise. Even though we're our defensive uh, Crobat, still like to throw a free creep. Yeah, nice. So I'm just going to go for a Fire Fang right here. We do 99%. So we miss him on the KO, but we get a burn, which is great. But it's only 27% off on my Maw Wow this turn. So um, still definitely a very solid trade for me. I do lose out on my Maw Wow, but I do have other ways of winning this game uh, with other members on our team, obviously. So. Now that uh, the Celly is really low, it's shown Protect, and I really think that's what it's going to end up clicking right here. I'm going to make a pretty aggressive switch to my Kiram. If he goes for a Heavy Slam, I'll still chew it up because I'm a Kiram, I'm heavy, and he's burned um, and very defensive. So I felt pretty comfortable making this play to kind of punish him for wanting to make the more passive Protect play, as he does end up doing so. And Ice Beam is pretty much a KO at this point. Uh, because again, especially with that T-Tar chip, Ice Beam and a Z Free Shot just kills it. And Ice Beam kind of just 2 it kills everything else besides Clef, which again, dashed to Z Free Shot after. Um, but Mianchao is going to come out next. He's going to make a nice U-turn play as I go into my Crobat, which is honestly completely fine with me. And right here, I'm going to make the aggressive play into my Toad. 
Um, if he wants to Earth Power, you can Earth Power, but I think Ice Beam into Earth Power pretty easy. Uh, as he is going to reveal Sub and actually reveal the Black Sludge, and this is great for me because this means that this Earth Power is not a 2 KO. I am Fizz Def Seismitoad, so the fact that he isn't Life Orb means he couldn't 2 a KO me raw. Um, I get the Sub because he's very scared of Sucker Punch from Mawile, um, which again makes a little bit of sense, but regardless, um, not being Life Orb really really clutch for me because now I can just scald break this up and then I have a pretty free knockoff right here because if he wants to stay in whatever I'll get the black sludge off the needle queen but it also covers Latias coming in um and gives me the information that this thing is a z move so I kind of go through this game uh with the idea that it is going to be dragonium z I think dragonium z draco meteor is pretty much a nuke at this point especially because of the fact that my uh mobile is so freaking chip um, so I am going to go into my Victini right here as I believe he ends up going for a substitute. So again, very, very scared of that Mawile Sucker Punch from, uh, the prep that he does have and has shown so far. Uh, I am just going to U-turn though. He sees that I'm Scarf. I'm going to go out into my Mawile right here, um, as I think that he potentially is going to just, like, Raw Dragon move me, uh, or recover up is another, you know, potential option right here. As he does go for the Roost, um, this next turn, I just go for the Play Rough. I didn't want this thing subbing again, and I'd say probably would have been fine to do so unless I was worried about Calm Mind. But at that point, that means that um, if he's sub roost Calm Mind, he's a mono attacking, and that you know wouldn't be very good for me. So I think in hindsight, Sucker was my play uh, because I would have gotten a ton of damage off on this. And if he, what do you call it? I wanted to Calm Mind up. Um, I could potentially break a sub and then figure out what his mono attack move is when he wants to knock me out and kind of deal with it from there. And if he's subbing in front of my Mawile, he's probably not mono dragon move, um, which is again, very good information for me personally to have. So we are going to get taken out by the surf, unfortunately. Should have just suckered. I'm going to go Victini and you're going to see that this, uh, this Latias is going to be an issue. Uh, it's going to be a big, big issue. As uh, the Mianchel is going to come out hard, which is definitely a very aggressive play. As we do just get the big, big U-turn off here, which is, again, pretty nice. Um, as I'm going to go into Crobat right here, and I believe I just have a pretty free Super Fang. He's going to U-turn, reveal to be Scarf, so again, very good information. Uh, no, I go for a Brave Bird, because there is no Flying Resist anymore besides the uh, Offensive T-Tar. As right here, this thing is definitely in 2 KO range. We do 54 there with our Brave Bird. Um, he's going to realize that's 2 KO, though, and go out in his Latias, which is not get to a KO, which again, um, a little bit unfortunate as this thing is going to roost around, and I'm going to have to kind of play around this thing a little bit and kind of dance around it, uh, because I don't want my Victim to get surfed and, you know, really chipped down, uh, but I don't have great pivots in this thing, and I don't have ways about speeding it and killing it very well, um, so I'm kind of going to U-turn around and try and dance a little bit uh, to see if there's anything that I can really do, as I'm going to go into Seismitoad here, hopefully being a surf. Unfortunately, it does not come out right here as Recover does. I'm going to go hard out into Victini, and we see the Draco Meteor in the last slot, um, which is again, good information to know. Now, because he is at minus two, I know for a fact that my Kyurem can live a Z Draco from full, um, guaranteed. Now we have to avoid a crit, but it does 97% max. Rocks are off the field, uh, so I feel pretty comfortable in doing so. This next turn, I am going to U-turn out and actually go into my Kyurem, expecting him to roost or Draco again. Or even if he surfs, I'm still in an okay spot. If he does roost in this next turn, he's actually going to Draco. Um, I don't know if he was Z Dragon or Z Water. Regardless, um, I figured he would save this, right? Because I feel like it still has the potency to potentially win later on. Um, and him giving this to me puts me in a really, really good position in this endgame. I'm going to go for my Z Free Shock instead of just going for Ice Beam. Because uh, Ice Beam didn't kill and this guarantee did. And if I could get this off the board... That's amazing for me, and he does end up giving it to me, which is great. Mianchou's going to come out next. He's going to make a good middle ground and go for a Stone Edge. I did know that I lived that hit from uh, the range I was at, uh, so I am still going to make that Crobat play, but once I see him click that, I am going to make that Pivot. I'm going to Seismitoad, which honestly can kind of win the game on its own outside of that uh, that Clefable right there, as he is going to go out into it, and because he blocks Stone Edge, I have a pretty free rest here, uh, which is going to allow me to get nice and healthy again, which is, again, great. Now, I'm going to go into Crobat hard on these Stealth Rocks going up, and I'm just going to roost up really quick. If he wants to go into Tar, I still have that switch in with my Crobat a little later on, which is important to just, you know, kind of keep this thing alive. But he is just going to Moonblast. I uh, may be expecting me to defog that turn, uh, as I am going to defog the following turn as the Needle King comes out, and I'm just going to go ahead and drop a big Brave Bird um, and knock it out. I am very surprised that he didn't end up going T-Tar. 
but I'll take it uh, because it means I didn't have to go on my toad and have to for sleep talk rolls and a bunch of shenanigans. Uh, and I was able to get that defog off and the Nido Queen. So next up, the Mianto is going to come out. Let's go back a little bit. Sorry. Um, on my Crobat. And again, assuming Stonehenge comes out right here. Uh, but I was pretty comfortable in sacking my Kyurem because if you look at it, it doesn't do much against the rest of this team. It dies to this, dies to this, and doesn't kill it. Dies to this and doesn't kill it. So I felt pretty comfortable sacking it off to see what he wants to lock into. Um, as he does click the knockoff, do 21 or 22%. So I'm ahead and like, ah, okay, I die. Uh, but this next one accidentally does 20. So I'm more able to knock out that Mancha raw uh, and do what 83% with an ice cream, which is great. Um, the fact that that was, an uh, was anonymous. Oh my gosh, I'm really tired. Awesome for me. Uh, you know, getting that free KO there. Getting rid of that Scarfer and essentially just stealing this game at this point. Uh, because Breloom plus Seismitoad plus Victini just does win um, in the end game. So he is going to go into Tyranitar. I'm just going to Earth Power. Uh, I have no reason not to. I died to Sand this next turn. Um, again, I don't Oko anything in the back. And uh, my Breloom can always come in and revenge it. So I'm not worried about a setup Tar. Um, so I feel pretty comfortable. And just clicking Earth Power, we do a good 36%, which is crazy because it's again offensive as via the DD, uh, and we're going to go down to Sandstorm. Now, he brought DD, despite me having Breloom, because, again, fair fair analysis on his end. He thought Breloom probably wasn't coming because he didn't have the best matchup, but I was so scared of Tar that I felt like this was necessary to have this in the back because um, it really could have just kind of <laughs> spiraled out of control and uh, smashed through me pretty easy. So uh, we did end up bringing it, and thankfully we did because this thing would have potentially just won the game with bad sleep talk rolls. Um, who knows, uh, especially if you didn't want to take that chip early on, uh, that earth power wouldn't have put it in range of like, you know, different chip from our pawns, but regardless, uh, you know, I am going to go into my Breloom right here. I am just going to click Mock Punch. I don't think I need to play around this cleft coming in. If I get that play wrong and he fire punches me, I do potentially just lose the game again. Uh, actually no, because I got Scarf Victini plus Helmet Toad, so I should be fine. Uh, but regardless... I'm just going to go for a Mach Punch right here, and I could go for Bolt C, but if I get only two hits, I don't believe I'll kill a Fizz Def Clef. So I'm actually just going to like to go for a Spore right here, and then go hard into my Victini and try and deal with it that way. Um, I can, you know, play this Song and Dance and Spore again the next time, and then Bolt C if he does wake up first turn on the Victini, but if he doesn't, I'm in a pretty good spot for this position. So I am just going to Spore and then go hard Victini. If he wakes up, he wakes up. Honestly, not the biggest deal in the world. As uh, we are going to take a little bit of sand chip as he does stay asleep. Again, phenomenal for me. I'm just going to click V create a bunch of times. As we see, it is 62 right there. Sand is going to go away, which is great. And I obviously still have speed. He's going to wake up this second turn to sleep, get off of protect, but really all in vain. Uh, as the tar will also, you know, kind of uh, take a lot of damage from that as well, because it's a pretty offensive tar that does come in right here. Um, I am going to save a little bit of diff uh, just because playoffs and top of the league is tight. Uh, and I'm going to go into my Toad because I know there's nothing he can do to beat me. And uh, it's not a choke because even if he does like two kill with like crunch into crunch drop and then, you know, I don't know, something like that, we always have Breloom in the back. So I lose one Pokemon regardless if he ends up getting a little lucky. But um, he doesn't, thankfully. And uh, Fire Punch into Crunch doesn't kill me. Two turns of Helmet does. And that is going to be weeks one through four. We're able to start off 4 now. So <laughs> that's obviously great. I think the team's awesome. I think it's performing well. Even in little slip ups that I've been having, um, the team's kind of been able to bail me. I think we've played pretty good in a lot of the games. I think I played really good in week three against Kurt. Um, up until that end game, I think that early game, I made some great aggressive doubles. I think against uh, Porpoise here. Uh, or is it Porpoise or is it Por Porpoise? I, I want to say like a weird because there's an I in there. I don't know if that word actually has an I. Um, but regardless, Oliver. Uh, we played a pretty solid versus him. I like the build a lot. Um, week one, I think we played great as well. So I'm really happy with the team. I'm really happy with how we've been performing. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of, you know, just doing these in two part kind of mini movies. Uh, I'll have weeks four through eight, hopefully playoffs. And another mini movie um it'll be like a two-part little docu series i guess on my apa classic season 19 run um and we should make playoffs i mean we just have to win one more game uh, to clinch it even then four and four can still make it so uh we just gotta win one more hopefully make playoffs and then um maybe walk away with the championship i think it'd be a lot of fun so let me know what you guys think in the comments below drop a like if you enjoyed so you know,